Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 6 The Little Blue Ox Part 2 It was while Paul Bunyan was logging in Maine that he secured Willie the little blue ox from a farmer. The great logger happened by chance to see the calf, and he was at once greatly attracted to him because the young animal was exactly the color of babe. He quickly hunted up the farmer and asked him what price he wanted for the blue calf. Sell him? exclaimed the farmer. Why, I'll be more than glad to give him away. He's a great eater, that calf is. He eats down 40 acres of hay in a day since he was weaned four days ago, and he doesn't have enough. My farm is only a section, and as only a quarter of it is in hay, I've been able to feed him for only four days. If I keep him over until tomorrow, I'll have to buy a new farm. So if you want him, stranger, just take him along, and I won't charge you a cent. Paul was delighted, and at once got the calf out of the pasture, put a rope around his neck, and started leading him back to camp. The poor calf was underfed when his new master got him, but he soon recovered. As it happened, Paul had long ago taught Babe to eat pine branches or needles or any other green stuff that should be found plentifully in the woods, and just as soon as he got Willie, he set about teaching the young animal to acquire the same taste. The little blue ox was so hungry that he learned almost instantly, and Paul walked very slowly on the way back to camp, allowing the calf to browse along as they traveled. The animal kept eating so fast and so much as he went along that every time his new master looked back, Willie had grown two feet taller. When they got to camp, the little blue ox was put into a specially built barn with a great mass of pine branches in the manger to keep him contented. During the night, however, the calf continued to grow, and the next morning he was found several miles away, grazing about with the barn perched on his back. Paul had great expectations for Willie, intending to yoke him up with Babe when he should get his full growth. The little blue ox was quite a disappointment, though, and he was never of much service on account of his great love for flapjacks. He was never willing to work any distance away from the cook shanty, and every chance he got he would spend his time standing with his head through one of the shanty windows and bothering the cooks to distraction, ready to gobble up any stray flapjack that might wander by. His master was never able to cure him of this strange passion, and it was ultimately the cause of his sad death later on. Through several years, it is not known exactly how many, Paul Bunyan continued his logging operations in Maine, establishing camps here and there as his work was done in different districts. He was always inventing and trying out new tools. And he finally had Ollie the Smith make for him a great cross-cut saw with a blade long enough to reach three miles Paul was very eager to try out his new invention, for he hoped that it would cut down trees faster than all his other tools together. When he tried using it, however, he found it unsatisfactory. 
Maine is a very mountainous state, as everyone knows, with hills almost everywhere. And when Paul tried using his big saw there, he found that it would only cut the timber on the tops of the hills, leaving that in the valleys untouched. Most of the best timber had been cut in Maine anyway, and so he began to long for a change of scene. Some new level land where the trees grew big and close together and where he would have ample opportunity for giving a fair test to his latest invention. It was about this time that certain things occurred which gave him the chance to carry out his ambition. The king of Sweden had just driven all the good farmers out of that country, and a senator from North Dakota wanted all the fine, upstanding timber cleared off of the whole state, and probably off of South Dakota as well, so as to make room for the Swedish farmers and attract them there with rich, free, ready-cleared farmland. He had heard of Paul Bunyan's great work in Maine, and so he asked him to do the job. Paul accepted the contract, and that is how he came to log off the Dakotas, doing the job all in one winter and causing those states to become the great treeless plains which they now are. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.